Hello dear students, welcome to the security of information systems lecture 11. Uh, so the today's topic is network perimeter security. Okay, let's start. The outline is as follows for today's lectures. Firewalls, routers, proxies, architectures, intrusion detection systems, host-based, network-based, dealing with false alarms, wireless LAN access control, evolution and history, WPA2, Robust Security Network Architecture, RNS. Okay. Perimeter Security Analogy Medieval Castle Defenses so uh, this is an analogy to understand uh, what is about perimeter security you see there are observation posts at the most outer uh, walls uh, there are guards there is normal access gate which has only one access as you can see uh, it has bridge gatehouse here and we have outer wall then we have inner wall as another security level then you see there is outer court mode and inner court. Uh, so uh, perimeter security is as but some similar to this one. Defending local networks network perimeter security. So you see there is uh, one access to our system. So this is our system. You see this uh, line represent our system and we have uh, access to internet normal access and first we have firewall you see here and we have gateway and router gateway router and packet filter at the first gate so the internet access starts from here and we separate our uh, network to two parts first one is external network okay it is uh it is called as the militarized zone let's look for definition in computer security a dmz or demilitarized zone sometimes referred to as a perimeter network or screen subnet is a physical or logical subnetwork that contains and exposes an organization's external facing services to an untrusted usually larger network such as the internet the purpose of a dmz is to add an additional layer of security to an organization's local area network lan an external network node can access only what is exposed in the dmz while the rest of the organization's network is firewalled one the dmz functions as a small isolated network positioned between the internet and the private network two the name is from the term demilitarized zone an area between states in which military operations are not permitted Okay, here uh, the function is this one. The DMZ functions as a small, isolated network positioned between the internet and the private network. Here we can see that uh, this is the area uh, which has uh, access to the internet and then we have internal network. So in our uh, DMZ area, we have DNS server, mail server, web server, which uh, servers has to have access to internet and we have honeypot we will see about honeypot we have switch and we have ids which is intrusion detection systems and then we have another firewall and uh, it has router and proxy then our internal network starts uh, which is our most uh, crucial and uh, important network there are production servers, workstations, uh, and another inter intrusion detection system, and database, and another switch. So this is the uh, kind of, uh, let's say, uh, illustration of network perimeter security. Okay, let's start with uh, firewalls. Network perimeter security method, firewalls. A firewall is a checkpoint that protects the internal networks against attack from outside networks. The checkpoint decides which traffic can pass in and out based on rules. 
You see external network which has potential threats, internet, and we have firewall. It is equivalent of checkpoint, and we have internal resources. Okay. Firewalls also do more things, but we will cover them as we see. Firewalls overview one. If the risk of having a connection to the internet is unacceptable, the most effective way of treating the risk is to avoid the risk altogether and disconnect completely. If disconnection from the internet is not practical, then firewalls may provide an effective level of protection that can reduce the risk to an acceptable level. Firewalls are often the first line of defense against external attacks, but should not be the only defense. A firewall's purpose is to prevent unauthorized access to or from a private network. Okay, so the best best uh, protection is uh, disconnecting from internet. However, if it is not possible, firewalls may help us to defend against external attacks, but it should not be the only defense we, we have. Uh, the firewall purpose is preventing unauthorized access or from a private network. Uh, access okay firewalls overview 2 all traffic entering or leaving must pass through firewall the network owner must define criteria for what is unauthorized this means that we have to define criteria for both what is unauthorized and or authorized okay the effectiveness of firewalls depends on specifying authorized traffic in terms of rules. The rules defines what to let pass through, the rules defines what to block. Okay. Firewalls must be effectively administered, updated with the latest patches and monitored. Firewalls can be implemented in both hardware and software, or a combination of both. Uh, this is important. Uh, usually, they are a combination of both, but you can have hardware firewall or software firewall as well. Types of firewall technology, vehicle analogy. So, from a vehicle uh, uh, point of view, if we look to firewall uh, as an analog analogy, the packet filters firewall is like inspects packet headers only. So, in the vehicle analogy, the packet header is being its plate number, you see. So, this packet filter firewall only checking the uh, vehicle uh, plate number of a vehicle and does nothing else. It doesn't check what is inside. There may be armored armored uh, man inside a car. However, packet filter will not check that. Therefore, uh, it will take uh, in uh, an armored uh, man of uh, full of armored man in a car. Okay, for example. <clears throat> then there is a stateful packet filters, which analyzes bidirectional traffic. Therefore. In this case, it will check from where the vehicle is coming and to where it is going. And then application layer proxy, which splits connection, inspects payload and analyzes traffic. You see in application layer proxy, it checks what is inside the car as well. And then there is next generation firewall, end-to-end -end connection, inspects payload and analyzes uh traffic we will see more about them so the types of firewall is like this you see simple packet filter uh, is like this and to -end trans transport connection and end to -end transport connection then end to -end transport connection and state info and the proxy uh, is internal transport connection application application external transport connection and next generation firewall internal connect transport connection and external transport connection okay let's continue stateless packet filter 
so we will now see the details of uh, these types of uh, firewalls okay A packet filter is a network router that can accept, reject packets based on headers. Packet filters examine each packet's headers and make decisions based on attributes such as Source or destination IP addresses, source or destination port numbers, protocol UDP, TCP or ICMP, ICMP message type, and which interface the packet arrived on, unaware of session states at internal or external hosts, high speed, but primitive filter. You see, with a stateless packet filter, we can uh, block certain IPs, certain IP ranges, and uh, we can block certain ports and certain port ranges or such uh, actually it, it can be pretty useful because if you block uh, unnecessary ports you would automatically improve your uh, security and if you block uh, certain IP addresses you may prevent certain uh, websites to be accessed or it is both valid for from incoming and uh, outgoing uh, traffic uh, it can also check the ICMP message type. So let's look for what is ICMP message type. I also don't know. So okay. Key Internet Control Message Protocol ICMP, is a supporting protocol in the Internet Protocol Suite. It is used by network devices, including routers, to send error messages and operational information indicating success or failure when communicating with another IP address, for example, an error is indicated when a requested service is not available or that a host or router could not be reached. 2. ICMP differs from transport protocols such as TCP and UDP in that it is not typically used to exchange data between systems, nor is it regularly employed by end-user network applications with the exception of some diagnostic tools like ping and tracer out okay i see and uh, which interface the packet arrives on Hmm, interface is about this. Okay, anyway, let's continue. So the uh, stateless packet filter is high speed but primitive filter. Then uh, we continue. Widespread packet filter software, Linux. IP tables, net filter, NFT, NT tables. Examples, IP tables. IP tables A forward S131.234.142.33 J accept. All packets from source IP address 131.234.142.33 are accepted. IP tables A forward P TCP D 10.0.0.56, D port 22 J accept. All packets using transport protocol and destination address 10.0.0.56 and destination port 22 are accepted. So you see it is pretty easy to define an IP table and allow certain IP, certain port and protocol or such. Okay. Problems with stateless filtering. 
Assume a typical security policy, access from internal to external allowed, access from external to internal prohibited, example application, home network. You see, this is true in our home network, we are usually not allowed to uh, have access from external to internal. What does this mean that uh, usually it, in your home network you cannot, for example, uh, become a host to a web website because uh, your ISP does not allow you to do that you to do that or you may not uh, set your home network as an uh, mail server to send emails because usually your uh, ISP also blocks that or such so this is a security a typical security policy but we are connecting connecting to website but it is from uh, uh, with our internal to external uh, policy naive packet filter configuration outgoing packet forward incoming packet reject okay i will pause for a moment Okay, stateful uh, filtering, internet and internal network. You see uh, TCPs, uh, SAN and DSTX. TCP, SIN, DSTX. Okay. TCP, SYNAC, SRC, X. Okay. UDP, DNS request, DST, Y. Okay. UDP, DNS response, SRC, Y. Anyway, it's not much uh, explanative there. Stateful packet filters. Stateful packet filters track current state of a connection. More intelligent than simple packet filters. Stateful packet filters keep track of sessions. Recognize if a particular packet is part of an established connection by remembering recent traffic history will add a temporary rule to allow the reply traffic back through the firewall. When session is finished, the temporary rule is deleted. This makes the definition of filtering rules easier to accomplish and therefore potentially more secure. High speed can use relatively advanced filter rules requires memory, so can be subject to dose denial of service attacks. Okay, um, so these are the states of uh, packets. Uh, you see from internal network to internet, there is a TCP synchronization packet. And let's see the states of IP packets. This is more related to uh, network. Okay, so these are the TCP states and with uh, um, stateful, stateful filtering where the uh, Pyble is able to keep the states and take action according to them. Let's uh, read the states. Closed. There is no connection. Listen, the local endpoint is waiting for a connection request from a remote endpoint i.e. a passive open was performed. Established, the third step of the three-way connection handshake was performed. The connection is open. 
Fin weight one, the first step of an active close four-way handshake was performed. The local endpoint has sent a connection termination request to the remote endpoint. Close weight, the local endpoint has received a connection termination request and acknowledged it e.g. a passive close has been performed and the local endpoint needs to perform an active close to leave this state. Fin weight 2, the remote endpoint has sent an acknowledgement for the previously sent connection termination request. The local endpoint waits for an active connection termination request from the remote endpoint. Last ACK, the local endpoint has performed a passive close and has initiated an active close by sending a connection termination request to the remote endpoint. Closing, the local endpoint is waiting for an acknowledgement for a connection termination request before going to the time wait state. Time wait, the local endpoint waits for twice the maximum segment lifetime MSL to pass before going to close to be sure that the remote endpoint received the acknowledgement. Okay. Let's continue with stateful packet filters. Examples IP tables, IP tables A forward M state, state new I F zero J except. Accept new connections, i.e. TCP SYN, from network interface at zero, from inside. Okay, at zero is at at zero, from inside and accept TCP SYN uh, packages. So, let's look for uh, TCP SYN. Okay. Okay, you see there is also TCP scene attack. Okay, one moment. Okay, and so you see, uh, the scene is synchronization uh, message. So the attack. So you see, there is a TCP sync, sync flute, uh, which is an attack type. Let's read that as well. What is a sin flood attack? TCP SYN flood, aka SYN flood, is a type of distributed denial of service DDoS, attack that exploits part of the normal TCP three-way handshake to consume resources on the targeted server and render it unresponsive. Essentially, with SYN flood DDoS, the offender sends TCP connection requests faster than the targeted machine can process them, causing network saturation. Attack description When a client and server establish a normal TCP three-way handshake, the exchange looks like this. Client requests connection by sending SYN synchronize message to the server. Server acknowledges by sending SYN ACK synchronize acknowledge message back to the client. Client responds with an ACK acknowledge message, and the connection is established. In a SYN flood attack, the attacker sends repeated SYN packets to every port on the targeted server, often using a fake IP address. The server, unaware of the attack, receives multiple, apparently legitimate requests to establish communication. It responds to each attempt with a SYN ACK packet from each open port. The malicious client either does not send the expected ACK, or, if the IP address is spoofed, never receives the SYN ACK in the first place. Either way, the server under attack will wait for acknowledgement of its SYN ACK packet for some time. So you see, you are able to spoof your IP uh, when sending packages. You just remove the uh, header and put a fake IP when sending the SYN uh, command. Therefore, the server uh, thinks that you are some other IP 
uh, and with a single IP you can uh, spoof the uh, an exhaust to server. It is like this: the attacker sends multiple uh, scene requests. The server uh, open a port, and server has only so many ports, so it is not uh, countless and opens the port and wait start waiting for acknowledgement message and sends you see uh, uh, the server sends sync acknowledgement message back to the client but it never uh, uh, arrives to the attacker because the attacker has already spoofed its ip and therefore the connections of the server exhaust the number of ports uh, and During this time, the server cannot close down the connection by sending an RST packet, and the connection stays open. Before the connection can time out, another SYN packet will arrive. This leaves an increasingly large number of connections half open, and indeed SYN flood attacks are also referred to as half open attacks. Eventually, as the server's connection overflow tables fill, service to legitimate clients will be denied, and the server may even malfunction or crash. While the classic SYN flood described above tries to exhaust network ports, SYN packets can also be used in DDoS attacks that try to clog your pipes with fake packets to achieve network saturation. The type of packet is not important. Still, SYN packets are often used because they are the least likely to be rejected by default. Okay, there are methods of mitigate, mitigation as well. Let's learn them too. Methods of mitigation While modern operating systems are better equipped to manage resources, which makes it more difficult to overflow connection tables, servers are still vulnerable to SYN flood attacks. There are a number of common techniques to mitigate SYN flood attacks, including Micro blocks, administrators can allocate a micro record as few as 16 bytes in the server memory for each incoming SYN request instead of a complete connection object. SYN cookies, using cryptographic hashing, the server sends its SYNAC response with a sequence number SICNO, that is constructed from the client IP address, port number, and possibly other unique identifying information. When the client responds, this hash is included in the ACK packet. The server verifies the ACK, and only then allocates memory for the connection. RST cookies, for the first request from a given client, the server intentionally sends an invalid SYN ACK. This should result in the client generating an RST packet, which tells the server something is wrong. If this is received, the server knows the request is legitimate, logs the client, and accepts subsequent incoming connections from it. Stack tweaking. Administrators can tweak TCP stacks to mitigate the effect of SYN floods. This can either involve reducing the timeout until a stack frees memory allocated to a connection, or selectively dropping incoming connections. Obviously, all of the above mentioned methods rely on the target network's ability to handle large scale volumetric DDoS attacks, with traffic volumes measured in tens of gigabits and even hundreds of gigabits per second. Okay, so we now know the what is team TCP scene, and we can accept a request from certain IP with uh, this command from to our firewall. IP tables a forward M state state established related J accept. Accept all packets which belong to an established TCP connection or are related to an existing UDP communication. Stateful packet filter evaluation. Strengths low overhead and high throughput supports almost any application. Weaknesses unable to interpret application layer data commands may allow insecure operations to occur allows direct connection between hosts inside and outside firewall.
Okay. Personal firewalls. A personal firewall is a program that is designed to protect the computer on which it is installed. Personal firewalls are frequently used by home users to protect themselves from the internet. Okay, you see such as internet, uh, Kaspersky Internet Security has a personal firewall. And I think we can see it from more details. And let's see, cloud protection quarantine. File antivirus, web antivirus, mail antivirus, network attack blocker, you see firewall. Nowadays, for example, included in Windows. Advantage compared to network firewall, rules can take applications into account. It is true, you can block connections or allow connections based on applications and such in, for example, both uh, Kaspersky Internet Security or uh, the firewall of the Windows. You see, Windows 10 has firewall and network protection. Like this, you can set rules. You see, allow and after a firewall, network and internet troubleshooter and such. Okay. PV4 Network Address Translation, NAT. Okay, IP4, uh, let's see. NAT used to increase IPv4 address space. Translates public IPADDR. Left right arrow private IPADDR. And ports. Uh, currently we are all on uh, NAT, actually CG NAT. Because the IP4 addresses that we use are extremely limited. Actually they are exhausted. Therefore, our uh, internet service providers are um, using a single IP to uh, make sometimes tens of, sometimes hundreds of users to connect the internet. For example, today the Discord uh, uh, was banned my IP address even though I didn't do anything because our IP is shared with maybe a hundred and other customers. Therefore, the Discord, for example, sees that uh, I am doing attacks to the Discord network because when ten, uh, maybe thousands of requests come from the single IP, uh, they may see that as, I'm, uh, as I am an attacker. Uh, so this is done bit, uh, by uh, not translation. Uh, it's an uh, advanced topic, uh, however, let's uh, try to understand it in a short time. Each local network can reuse private IP address ranges, artificially increases the number of usable IP addresses. Possibilities Static mapping, permanent mapping of public to private address, no gain. Dynamic mapping Mapping of public to private address when needed, unmapped when no longer needed. PAT port address translation, multiple internal addresses mapped to same public address but with different port number. Okay, this is what is being used. You see here, I will try to explain you. Uh, we have one public internet access, uh, IP address that we are all co being connected to. And uh, our internal network is being the network of the, our internet service provider, okay, such as SuperOnline or TTNet. And internally, uh, our internet service provider assigns us a private IP address and a private port. So, with combination of these uh, uh, private uh, IP address and private port, they are able to differentiate the outgoing ports and incoming uh, outgoing and incoming uh, connections for example uh, it assigns the public port 5001 to me 5002 to another customer 5003 to another customer therefore with different public port assignment they can map which connection belongs to the which client okay so uh, with this way, they can even connect 1,000 or 10,000 of 
different uh, computer to the same public internet IP address. Uh, this has so many uh, drawbacks, of course. Uh, for example, what has happened to me uh, today, uh, the Discord had banned me, or if uh, another client commits a crime through this public uh, IP address and if the uh, there if there are no proper records hold in my ISP they may not uh, convert uh, who has uh, committed that crime and if the remote server which uh, which holds the uh, which uh, where the crime committed does not keep the incoming connection public port then that still cannot be uh, translated to the who has committed that crime and so uh, and such uh, this is really an advanced topic and uh, if you wonder how it works you can look for articles i will show you some i will find a good article for you to read Okay, for example, this article is good. You may read this, how it works. Anyway, and so you see here, host 10.0.0.1. For example, it is the client one. Okay, sends datagram to this remote, uh, uh, this remote IP from uh, port 80. Then this uh, connection request is opened with the internal port uh, 3345 to the destination uh, this IP address with uh, public port 80 okay then it goes to the internal uh, switch okay and this switch you see 10.0.0.4 translate this request to the some public request you see with public request to uh, from pub, uh, to our public IP address uh, and with the public port 5001 when the remote server sends back the data with 5001 public port the switch translate this to back to us to server uh, client one so the public port here is being the determiner of who has sent and with, by using this uh, our uh, private network which is our internet service provider finds who has sent that uh, request okay ipv4 net plus and Advantages, helps enforce control over outbound connections, helps restrict incoming traffic, helps conceal internal network configuration, makes port scanning more difficult. Can't be used with, protocols that require a separate back channel, protocols that encrypt TCP headers such as IPSC, embedded TCP address info, not recommended with IPv6. There are also some other disadvantages. You may also look for them on the internet. Application layer proxy. One, external client sends a request to the server, which is intercepted by the outwards facing firewall proxy two. Inwards facing proxy sends request to server on behalf of client. Three, Server sends reply back to inwards facing firewall proxy. 4. Outwards facing proxy sends reply to the client. Client and server both think they communicate directly with each other, not knowing that they actually talk with a proxy. The proxy can inspect the application data at any level of detail and can even modify the data. So you see, there is, uh, the, uh, there is outwards facing proxy here, the orange box, and there is inwards uh, 
web facing proxy which is green one so when client wants to communicate with server actually it communicates with proxy however uh, it is not being uh, aware of uh, it is communicating with the proxy okay so this is application layer proxy next generation firewalls ngfw inspects payload in end to end or proxy application connection support specific application protocols eg http telnet ftp smtp etc each protocol supported by a specific proxy hw sw module this is hardware and this is software can be configured to filter specific user applications e.g. Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn can filter detailed elements in each specific user application and for example if you are connected behind an application layer firewall uh, your uh, data can also be read by the firewall okay uh, therefore if you have installed the uh, firewall root uh, certificate the administrator can see even the content of your HTTPS connection we will see about that you see can support TLS SSL encrypted traffic inspection can provide intrusion detection and intrusion prevention very high processing load in firewall high volume needs high performance hardware or else will be slow you see it has of course very high processing load because it inspects every package uh, inside high performance ngfws high range model pa7050 up to 120 gigabits per second throughput prices starting from 200,000 united states dollars by the way this is probably old and outdated right now but you get the idea these uh, prices are not uh, extreme they are real high range model 61,000 security system up to 400 gigabits per second throughput prices starting from 200,000 united states dollars let's look for price okay let's look for some uh, up to date prices okay they are not showing here let's look you see these are very low uh throughout puts it is not even one uh, gigabit per second and this price is one thousand two hundred dollars and let's look for something good okay for example 75 gigabit per second you see it is two hundred fifty thousand dollars and this is not even 100 gigabits per second if you get something one terabit per second oh this is not that you see they are extremely uh, expensive uh, such firewalls are extremely expensive you see these are the models but their prices are not included here anyway you get the idea they are extremely expensive uh, one moment okay inline deep packet inspection deep packet inspection looks at application content instead of individual or multiple packets deep inspection keeps track of application content across multiple packets potentially unlimited level of detail in traffic filtering you see with a uh, deep inspection they can see the payload data as well and what is the content of the received message received traffic it checks ip header udp header payload data tls ssl encrypted traffic inspection in firewalls 
TLS designed for end-to-end -end encryption, normally impossible to inspect. In order to inspect TLS, proxy must pretend to be external TLS server. Proxy creates proxy server certificate with the name of external server, e.g. Facebook.com, signed by local proxy root private key, assumes that local proxy root certificate is installed on all local hosts. The proxy server certificate is automatically validated by local client, so user may believe that he, she has TLS connection to the external server. Okay, so you see for this to work, local proxy root certificate has to be installed on your uh, computer or device. If it is not installed, uh, you would get an error message from your uh, browser. Therefore, uh, for example, if you are working in a company and company has provided you a computer, uh, your uh, HTTPS traffic may not be secure as you might think because they may read your uh, traffic content as well if they have installed a proxy root certificate to your uh, computer or device okay so it works like this client pro uh, request uh, data from server for example from uh, Facebook our request go to first proxy B uh, which has a uh, uh, internet PKI root certificate then the server sends back the TSL connect uh, encrypted connection back and proxy behaves as as the client itself in here uh, uh, for Facebook the proxy behaves as a client and for client it behaves as a Facebook therefore both sites are not aware of the proxy you see proxy certificate B name C signed by proxy root certificate C name C signed by certificate certificate authority in the internet PKA okay TLS inspection attack with rogue proxy server Depending on network, attackers may be able to install rogue proxy. Rogue TLS inspect does not assume pre-installed proxy root certificate. Proxy creates fake server certificate with the name of external server, e.g. Facebook.com, that e.g. can be self-signed. Fake server certificate is not validated, so browser asks user to accept it. Fake certificate has name equals domain name, so browser sets up TLS, and user believes that he, she has TLS connection connection to the external server the key point of a rogue server is that your browser asks you to accept certificate so when you see such a uh, warning uh, from your browser uh, it asks you to accept certificates for example Let me show you what I mean by that. Okay, for example, you will get an error like this. Your connection is not private. Attackers might be trying to steal your information from example.com. And when you click the advanced, it allows you to continue with uh, uh, this uh, self-signed certificate or such. Therefore, you should never ask, accept that unless you are sure about it. Lenovo and the Superfish Scam Superfish root certificate and diversion in ship Lenovo models during 2014, all HTTPS connections diverted to Superfish server to inject advertisements. Superfish created fake server certificates with names of web servers e.g. Facebook.com, signed by Superfish root private key. Fake server certificates were automatically validated, so users believed that he, she had secure end-to-end -end HTTPS connection to the web server. Scam discovered in 2015, Superfish cert. Deleted and diversion removed. Embarrassment for Lenovo. Superfish changed name to Just Visual. So yeah, so you see, when a root certificate installed to your computer, then they may do anything they want because 
your browser would automatically uh, accept that certificate as valid and let you proceed uh, so this is uh, a danger for example currently when open uh, when i open a website my computer trusts the server certificate by kaspersky you see here issued by kaspersky antivirus personal root certificate so in that case it was a certificate by lenovo however you were not aware that I mean Superfish, not Lenovo. Application proxy firewalls plus and This is a uh, positive size and negative size. The strengths are as follow. Strengths, easy logging and audit of all incoming traffic, provides potential for best security through control of application layer data, commands. Weaknesses may require some time for adapting to new applications, much slower than packet filters, much more expensive than packet filters. Also, there can be privacy issues because your data is not anymore private, uh, even if you connect through SSL uh, port, because the system administrators can inspect and see your uh, content. Firewalls, simple firewall architecture. So there is a firewall router, this is a gateway, which connects your network to the internet and there are internet, internal networks such as DNS server, web server, email server, workstations, production systems and database. So a firewall is a gateway that lets your systems to connect to the internet. This is the demilitarized uh, zone. We have seen that. Firewalls, DMZ firewall architecture. So in the DMZ firewall architecture, there are two firewalls. Uh, first one is external router firewall, which uh, lets your must be internet connected uh, devices to the internet here, DNS server, web server, email server. And then it connects your demilitarized zone to your internal network with internal router firewall then there are workstations production systems and database server and such so the demilitarized zone example is like this dmz equals a part of your lan with other restrictions eg allowing publicly available services web servers mail etc so you see there is external public network internet and then we have firewall external then we have web server ftf server they are in the demilitarized zone and then we have firewall internal which connects our internal network internal uh, servers to our uh, demilitarized zone servers such as web server or ftf ftp server okay now intrusion detection systems ids IDS is intrusion detection system. Intrusion detection and prevention. Intrusion, actions aimed at compromising the security of a target network, confidentiality, integrity, availability of resources. Intrusion detection, the identification of possible intrusion through intrusion signatures and network activity analysis, IDS, intrusion detection systems. Intrusion prevention, the process of both detecting intrusion activities and managing automatic responsive actions throughout the network, IPS, intrusion prevention systems, IDPS, intrusion detection and prevention systems. Okay. Intrusion detection systems. IDs are automated systems that detect suspicious activity. IDs can be either host-based or network-based. 
A host-based IDS is designed to detect intrusions only on the host it is installed on, monitor changes to host's OS files and traffic sent to the host. Network-based IDS NIDS, detect intrusions in one or more network segments. To protect multiple hosts, monitor network. S looking for suspicious traffic, what can be detected, attempted and successful misuse, both external and internal agents, malware. Trojan programs, viruses and worms, DOS, denial of service, attacks. So you see, an IDS system can even detect Trojan programs, viruses or worms. Actually, uh, Kaspersky Internet Security also does this. When you visit a web page, it checks the uh, JavaScript code and some other codes uh, or data on the website you are visiting and analyzes its content and if it detects harmful scripts or such it prevents you from connected that connecting that website okay so it is kind of behaving as an ids network its deployment okay we have external router firewall which connects our system to the internet then we have internal router firewall and you see there are uh, network intrusion detection uh, in, intrusion detection systems network based so it checks the incoming traffic here and also we have one here so we ensure that both in demilitarized network and internal network uh, we try to detect the intrusion attacks okay so what are the techniques? Intrusion detection techniques. Misuse detection, use attack, signatures, need a model of the attack, sequences of system calls, patterns of network traffic, etc. Must know in advance what attacker will do, how, can only detect known attacks, relatively few false positives. So this is based on the uh, predetermined attacks actually can only detect known attacks therefore it has relatively few false positives because it knows the attack signature anomaly detection using a model of normal system behavior try to detect deviations and abnormalities e.g. raise an alarm when a statistically rare events occurs can potentially detect unknown attacks many false positives because this is the dynamic one and based on the events occurring it tries to detect an attack for example let's say your uh, network usually gets uh, 100 or 1000 incoming connections at any time and let's say uh, it's your your system starts getting 100,000 connections uh, at any given time uh, uh, out of nothing and that is a that is an alarming situation because let's say you are operating a web server and some hacker may be trying to find uh, vulnerabilities and exploits on your web service web server uh, try to crawl all your web, web forms and submit uh, harmful codes to find whether your web server has uh, let's say uh, sql injection vulnerability or such so the anomaly detection is harder and yet it may capture more uh, type of attacks popular nids Snort popular open source tool, large rule sets for known vulnerabilities, e.g., the 31st of March 2009, a programming error in MySQL server may allow a remote attacker to cause a denial of service DOS against a vulnerable machine. The 27th of March 2009, Microsoft Windows GDI buffer overflow, a programming error in the Microsoft Windows kernel may allow a remote attacker to execute code with system level privileges. This may be exploited when specially crafted EMF files are viewed using Microsoft Internet Explorer.
Bro, developed by Vern Paxson, separates data collection and security decisions. Event Engine distills the packet stream into high level events describing what's happening on the network. Policy Script Interpreter uses a script defining the network's security policy to decide what to do in response. Okay. Example Vulnerability plus Snort Rule. Okay, so so this is a uh, uh, snort rule. It checks um, possible leak of kernel heap memory and take action according to that okay anyway let's continue port scanning many vulnerabilities are os specific bugs in specific implementations default configuration this is so true uh, hackers usually scan uh, with automated tools to your system and they check the uh, already discovered vulnerabilities vulnerabilities for example if you are using windows server 2000 let's say 3 and you have unpatched server so they check that existing or discovered vulnerabilities vulnerabilities in your server whether you have you are using a patched version of windows or not or let's say you are using a popular uh, forum uh, software such as my bb and they are checking whether you have fixed the previously uh, discovered uh, exploits or not uh, so they check based on your system either your operating system or uh, the software you are using port scan is often a prelude to an attack attacker tries many ports and many ip addresses for example looking for an old version of some daemon with an unpatched buffer overflow if characteristic behavior detected mount attack the art of intrusion virtually every attack involves port scanning and password cracking so example network service on windows computers example network services on a windows computer so you see these ports are listened by the windows what does listened mean listened means that the server uh, periodically checks whether there are any incoming data from these ports and if there are incoming data it automatically accepted and processed it therefore if there are an exploit if there is an exploit on that port previously discovered and you are using an unpatched windows uh, therefore that exploit still remains on your windows uh, so the attacker can exploit it without your inter inter uh, intervention okay without your interaction so this is about port scanning therefore you should keep unused ports closed that would improve your system security uh, with uh, prevention of previously discovered uh, exploits or undiscovered exploits okay intrusion detection problems lack of training data with real attacks but lots of normal network traffic system call data data drift statistical methods detect changes in behavior attacker can attack gradually and incrementally discriminating characteristics hard to specify many attacks may be within bounds of normal range of activities false identifications are very costly sysadm will spend many hours examining evidence Okay, probability density function profile of intruder behavior and profiler of authorized user behavior. So they have overlapping behavior, and in this area, you may block an authorized user or you may allow intruder. Okay. Intrusion detection errors.
false negatives, attack is not detected, big problem in signature-based misuse detection, false positives, harmless behavior is classified as attack, big problem in statistical anomaly detection, both types of IDs suffer from both error types, both false positives and false negatives are problematic, attacks are fairly rare events, IDs often suffer from base rate fallacy. Base rate fallacy. Consider statements. A. Attack occurs. D. Detection occurs. We can measure, estimate, P. D. A. Probability of detection, given that attack occurs. P. D. A. Probability of detection, given that no attack occurs. P. A. Probability of attack, we want to know. False, true positives. P. A. D. Probability of attack, given that detection triggers. Bayes theorem. P A D equals P D A P A P D equals P D A P A 47 P D A P A plus P D A P A. Okay. Base rate fallacy. Example, scanner is 99% correct, P, D, A equals 0 0.99, P, D, A equals 0 0.01, attack probability, P, A equals 1 ten thousandth, P, A, D equals, result, 0 0.99 0 0.00014800.99 0 .00 0 .00 0 0.001 plus 0 0.01 0 0.9999 equals 0 0.01 0 0.0098 to 1% accuracy 99 false positives per true positives so uh, let's say uh, you accept all everything as a non-attack in that case you would have 99 accuracy but you would miss that one attack so this is base rate fallacy it is really hard to detect uh, rare events uh, in a lot of events you may also find an explaining article to this The base rate fallacy, also called base rate neglect or base rate bias, is a fallacy if presented with related base rate information i.e., general information on prevalence and specific information i.e., information pertaining only to a specific case, people tend to ignore the base rate in favor of the individuating information, rather than correctly integrating the two. One. Okay, anyway, let's continue. Remarks on intrusion detection most alarms are false positives, requires automated screening and filtering of alarms, most true positives are trivial incidents, can be ignored, the attacks will never be able to penetrate any system, serious incidents need human attention, can be dealt with locally, may require external expertise, potential for improvement through more intelligent ids, less false positives, better detection of advanced attacks apt. Okay. Intrusion Prevention Systems Intrusion Prevention System IPS, is a relatively new term that can mean different things, most commonly, an IPS is a combination of an IDS and a firewall, a system that detects an attack and can stop it as well, can be application-specific, deployed on a host to stop attacks on specific applications such as IIS, can be an extension of an NIDS, false positives are problematic, because automated prevention measures can block services. When false positive happens, it means that you have blocked an authenticated user. So they are really problematic. And honeypots, which are extremely uh, popular. A honeypot is a computer configured to detect network attacks or malicious behavior, appears to be part of a network, and seems to contain information or a resource of value to attackers. But honeypots are isolated, are never advertised and are continuously monitored, all connections to honeypots are per definition malicious, can be used to extract attack signatures, Honeynet is an international security club, see next slide.
Okay, virus, land, security. About honeypots, I will uh, show you an article. Okay. Okay, there is an article on the Kaspersky. What is a honeypot? The definition of a honeypot one honeypot definition comes from the world of espionage, where Mata Hari style spies who use a romantic relationship as a way to steal secrets are described as setting a honey trap or honeypot. Often, an enemy spy is compromised by a honey trap and then forced to hand over everything he, she knows. In computer security terms, a cyber honeypot works in a similar way, baiting a trap for hackers. It's a sacrificial computer system that's intended to attract cyber attacks, like a decoy. It mimics a target for hackers and uses their intrusion attempts to gain information about cyber criminals and the way they are operating or to distract them from other targets. Okay. How honeypots work. The honeypot looks like a real computer system, with applications and data, fooling cyber criminals into thinking it's a legitimate target. For example, a honeypot could mimic a company's customer billing system, a frequent target of attack for criminals who want to find credit card numbers. Once the hackers are in, they can be tracked, and their behavior assessed for clues on how to make the real network more secure. Honeypots are made attractive to attackers by building in deliberate security vulnerabilities. For instance, a honeypot might have ports that respond to a port scan or weak passwords. Vulnerable ports might be left open to entice attackers into the honeypot environment, rather than the more secure live network. A honeypot isn't set up to address a specific problem, like a firewall or antivirus. Instead, it's an information tool that can help you understand existing threats to your business and spot the emergence of new threats. With the intelligence obtained from a honeypot, security efforts can be prioritized and focused. Different types of honeypot and how they work. Different types of honeypot can be used to identify different types of threats. Various honeypot definitions are based on the threat type that's addressed. All of them have a place in a thorough and effective cybersecurity strategy. Okay, there are email traps or spam traps, a decoy database, a malware honeypot, a spider honeypot, <clears throat> and <laughs> there are other things if you want to learn more about them uh, you can uh, read this article okay let's continue to our lecture ieee 802.11 standards for wlan IEEE 802.11 formed in 1990s, charter to develop a protocol and transmission specifications for wireless LANs, WLANs, since then the demand for WLANs, at different frequencies and data rates, has exploded, new ever-expanding list of standards issued, from 10 megabits per second to 1 gigabit per second transmission rate. Okay, there is wireless, <coughs> wireless station, our mobile devices, laptops and such or IT devices, Wi-Fi security, and we have access point, our modem, and we connect to the internet. Eight hundred two point one one Wi-Fi security. Only authorized terminals or users may get access through wireless LAN, should be impossible to set up rogue AP, interception of traffic by radios within range should be impossible. Okay, so that are the security, um, let's say protocols, web, 
VPA, VPA2. Usually, uh, currently, we are using all VPA2. And uh, you see authentication and key generation web, EAP, EAP, and encryption is RC4, RC4 authenticated, such. I remember that in 2000s, you were able to decrypt uh, YP passwords just by gathering uh, some random YP data over uh, with uh, listening uh, that YP data transfer. It was possible. However, with recent authentication with VPA2, it is impossible. For example, I will show you. WEP cracking. In order to crack WEP, we need first to capture the large number of packets that means we can capture a large number of IVs. Once we have done that, we will use a tool called air cracking. This tool will be able to use statistical attacks to determine the key stream and the WEP key for the target network. This method is going to be better when we have more than two packets, and our chances of breaking the key will be higher. Let's look at the most basic case of cracking a WEP key. To do this, we will set Wi-Fi card in monitor mode. After this, we will run a command aerodump ing WLAN 0 to see all of the networks that are within our Wi-Fi range and then we will target one of those networks. Where WLAN 0 stands for the interface. The following output will be displayed after executing this command. Okay, so it was so easy to uh, crack uh, web passwords. Okay, you see there's already a tool. Okay. However, recent uh, applications all use VPA2 and which is extremely harder to crack made impossible. WEP, Wired Equivalent Privacy, Broken, WPA, Wi-Fi Protected Access, EAP, Extensible Authentication Protocol, RC4, Rivist Cipher 4, A Stream Cipher, TCAP, Temporal Key Integrity Protocol, CCMP, Counter Mode with CBC Message Authentication Protocol, RSN, Robust Security Network. Okay. IEEE 802 terminology Station STA wireless terminal that communicates with 802.11 functionality access point AP receives radio signals and controls access to network basic service set BSS set of stations and one AP extended service set S set of multiple BSSs distribution system DS contains an authentication server as integrates multiple BSSs into one S network components and architecture okay you see access point one basic service set and there are the stations and access point two and there are stations and this is the distribution service 802.11 irsn services and protocols okay robot security network rsn Access control IAA 802.1 port based access control extensible authentication access point uh, authentication protocol TKIP and CMP confidential data original authentication and integrity and replay protection authentication and K generation and access control. Okay. Cryptographic algorithms like this okay so how the authentication happens first phase one discovery of access point phase two authentication with authentication service phase three key management phase four protected data transfer and phase of connection termination eight hundred two point one one i wi-fi access control 1. Mutual identity request between STA and AP2. 
Mutual authentication between STA and AS. 3. Derive pairwise master key PMK between STA and AP. 4. Encrypt radio link and open port connect to network access, controlled port from AP to network, is closed, disconnected, before authentication, is open, connected, after successful authentication. You see at the first uh, step we request, we connect to access point, then there is going an incoming uh, connection and at the fourth step, we get encrypted connection. You see, an, a port is getting opened with the authentication server at the phase two. Then there is a controlled port opened for our station, and from that port we communicate with the local network and then with the internet. When you don't control the WLAN. Often you want to connect to a wireless LAN over which you have no control, e.g. in cafe, options, if you can, connect securely, WPA2, 802.11i, etc., beware of SSL stripping, if unsecured, connect to online resources securely, use a VPN, virtual private network, IPSC connection to home gateway, TLS, SSL connections to secure web server, with HSTS be careful not to expose passwords, watch for direct attacks on untrusted networks. End of lectures. Okay, so, uh, when you are connecting, an, uh, connecting internet from uh, an unsecured network, li like from internet cafe or from your hotel room, if you are going to uh, work on sensitive data use a VPN so VPN will increase your uh, data encryption level and also always use SSL so if you use both SSL and a VPN it is extremely uh, unlikely or let's say impossible for that uh, network administrator to see your uh, content see your data transmission okay i think it is uh, enough for this week uh, you get the idea of the topics you can always look for articles to get more details okay hopefully see you next week and end of lectures